Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am an independent contractor and trainer. In this episode, I want to talk about a little used and I believe largely forgotten function that still exists in C++ and is actually from C. And that is puts. That's here on cppreference.com. You can see standard puts. And I want to make a couple of points about it. Let's start with our trusty Hello World example. And if you watched these videos for any time at all, you know that I am not going to put standard inline in my example. But let's start from the beginning, and that we need to include IOStream. And by including IOStream, what we are doing is adding a global variable to our program called Cout. Well, there's also C error and C log and CN and anyhow, we're creating some global variables. And to do that, the system needs to initialize the IO subsystem in the standard library here. And we end up with this code that actually, you know, it, it, it's not insignificant what it has to do. Considering we haven't actually written a program that does anything yet, we have all of this happening before main even begins. And some cleanup that has to happen at exit. So let's start with our standard C out hello world version. And we're doing like I would normally say to do here with this backslash n for a new line. And we can see that it's relatively straightforward what it has to do. It creates this string hello world with a new line on the end of it. And then it passes that to some heavily templated basic O stream output thing. Now let's just for comparison add the end line version here. And you might not have ever stopped to think what all the compiler has to do, but it actually has to instantiate another template, one that can take our end line object, and we have one that takes the car string object here. So it actually has to instantiate another version of the insertion operator, as it's called here to be able to actually handle this inline and results in a second function call and a larger binary overall. So, and well, the compiler is going to generate a flush on the program exit anyhow, the operating system will flush the buffers on program exit. So let's go back to this. Now let's compare this to our simple printf version. And if we look at the compiled binary here, we'll see that it's actually calling a function called puts. Now puts, which we just saw its page on cvpreference.com, is going to print a null terminated string followed by a new line. So this is able to detect that we have this new line in here and it just says, hey, let's make that into puts. And if we take out the new line, then we've got this call to printf instead. Now printf is interesting because it actually has to parse the string to see if there's any control characters in there so that it knows what it needs to do for actually printing stuff, uh, formatted things to the screen. So if you were to take our argv and we were to call printf of argv of one. This is actually a security risk in a couple of different ways. The first is that someone could compromise our program by passing in printf control characters that would expect it to be parsing subsequent parameters in the comma delimited list that can come after this in printf. And also we didn't check to see how many parameters are actually passed to argv. So I guess this could be guaranteed to be a null pointer, but this is generally considered to be bad. We can directly call puts, of course. And now our program becomes extraordinarily simple and easy to compile and interestingly, extremely efficient. This came up because I was dealing with some performance questions that users had with ChaiScript when outputting a lot of data to the screen. And this is because I was actually using IO streams to print the data and then do a new line after each line when the user in ChaiScript would actually call something like 
which I have in ChiScript, puts also. And I was asking the compiler to do all kinds of extra work, plus I was asking the runtime to have to do things. And if I printed it via printf, then it was having to take this string coming from this unknown source and having to parse it for any control characters. And so what I realized was the fastest thing to do on all platforms and all situations, when I know that I need to print a string followed by a new line, is just to simply use puts. And this works. This will print this string followed by a new line, and it's no big deal. You can even look at the compiled version of it here. It's quite small. It takes a pointer to the parameter that was first passed into it, basically, and just calls puts with it. The downside is that this does require a null terminated string. So we know that it's going to work in this situation. But if we were to have passed in a C17 string view into it, which doesn't have a C string, method, which it can't, because a string view can be a view into a subset of a string. It has begin and end pointers. This isn't going to work with puts. But if you've got a standard string and you know you need to print it with a new line followed after it, this is probably the method you want to take. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.